I'm so excited to be here with Natalena and talk about the real reason your business is not growing and more. Welcome on the show. Thank you so much, Sigrun. It's an awesome um, potential to be here. Thank you. And I notice, uh, Nada, that you are wearing red and black. Did you know that red is my favorite color? And so you have just <laughs> made my day. I did not, but I could see based off of your background and what you're wearing that it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great start uh, when you have a guest on your show that we start with same colors. Uh, mm -hmm. Nada, we want to talk about your journey first before we dive into the meaty part of the episode, because I am just such a curious person. I, I guess it stems from the fact that I had so much issues getting my business off the ground. And I am assuming that my listeners want to know all the different paths and ways, you know, how one can get to seven figures. And that's why I want to hear it from you. Yeah. So my journey is quite interesting. I actually started as a performer. I used to tour the world internationally as a singer and a dancer. And I, you know, I always recognized that every time I stepped into the room as a performer, I was always put center stage. So I was always the number one performer in the room. But here's the, here's the most interesting part as I was never ever the best singer or the best dancer. So there were always three or four other women or men that can sing me out of the water, like their technique, their strategy was way better than me, but they stood in the back and I got casted center stage in what we call like the diva spot. Mm -hmm. And they always used to say, Oh, I wish I could be like you. I wish I can have what you have. And I used to say, actually, you have more than what I have. The only difference is, is that I believe that I should stand here. And when I walk into a room, I walk in confidently and I walk in with the ability to promote myself and my brand and my product, right? Because even as a performer, you have a product and that's your voice. So I did that for a couple of years. And then after that, I became an executive of an education corporation. And I saw the same challenges. So I was working with men and women that had PhDs, master's degrees, and many of them, actually most of them were sabotaging their success because they were afraid to make the ask. They had imposter syndrome. They didn't feel like they were adding value or that they were good enough. And so even today with our research, with our company, we assessed over 2000 people that are working, working professionals. So that either own their own business or they're in the corporate space. 82% said that their number one challenge is their mindset and confidence. It's their number one challenge. Um, and so from those experiences, I recognized that there was a need, that there was a gap. And from my own personal journey, I built my company with only $100 and took it to where it is today, which is an awesome team throughout the world. We're in 15 countries right now. Featured on Entrepreneur, I was just named um, Woman of the Year for Entrepreneurship in Orange County, California. So yeah, it can be done. But it starts with confidence. It starts with confidence. And a lot of people don't know that because they don't recognize that in themselves because society has termed confidence in a very different way, right? We've, we've redefined confidence in a way that's actually not authentic to the real definition. It's not true to the real definition. So when we think of confidence, we just think of like, oh, like you're strong, you show up. You know, people would say that I'm confident because of my energy and like how I dress and what I wear, but really that's not what confidence is. Confidence is the ability to take action and so much more. So every time a client comes to me or someone comes to me and says, well, I'm having trouble building my business or I'm having trouble taking action, my response is, well, then it's confidence because anyone can go online and figure out how to build a business and gain strategy. Mm -hmm. That's not rocket science. Anyone today, all of the information, all the tools, all the strategies that we need to be successful are at the are at our tips of the fingers, yeah. right? But why aren't, why isn't everyone successful? Why isn't everyone building a million dollar business? Because there's something that's getting in the way between you and taking action in a way that's actually going to make a difference in your business. Mm. How did you go from performance to the educational business? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I just, as a performer, I recognize that I enjoyed the empowerment piece of it. So it wasn't so much about me singing, but I loved walking on stage in front of 10,000 people in Russia 
that couldn't speak the same language as me. You know what I mean? But I would do something emotionally or connect with the audience and they were moved. And it was that feeling of just making a positive impact. So for me, that's kind of where I went into making a positive impact through my message of teaching or being in the education world and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm. But you said you already had an advantage because you somehow believed that you deserved the success that you were having. So even though others were better at some things, where did that confidence come from originally? Yeah. So confidence comes from your environment. It comes from, so there's, there's two schools of thought on this. Some researchers say that you're born with confidence, either you have it or you don't, right? Mm -hmm. Like tough if you don't. And then other people say that you're not born with it, that you can build it like a skill. I agree with both of them. So every single person and research shows and neuroscientists show that every single person is born with a certain level of confidence and positivity, but instantly, depending on the family that you're born in, the culture, your environment, demographic, it makes an impact on you when you're a baby, like right when you're born. Mm -hmm. So some people are really fortunate like myself. I was born into a family that was really kind, very loving. They didn't put any beliefs on me. Like they were really, really, um, they made sure that my brothers and I, I have two brothers, They made sure that my brothers and I loved ourselves. We had confidence. We believed in ourselves. If we got a B or if we got an A minus in the American school system, right, with the grade, my dad would say, well, why didn't you get the A plus? Do you have the ability to get the A plus? We'd say, yeah. Okay, well, don't you deserve to get the, yeah. So why did, so there was always that mindset that was embedded in us our whole entire life. So by the time we got to, if I had a teacher that was mean to me, or if I had, you know, a romantic relationship where they weren't kind, I already knew better. So Mm -hmm. in my brain, I would say, "Mm, yeah, that's not true. No, thank you. (laughs) Because I had such positive parenting growing up. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that most of us, we are an accumulation of our past experiences. So beliefs, any trauma, any situations, any relationships that we've had that made us feel not great about ourselves, we either made the decision to take in that information and believe it, or we had the confidence from our parents and from mentors to say, that's not my belief, that's your belief. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, most of us are the first part, right? Most of us take in that information and most individuals are, are born into an environment that's not always uplifting. And then we believe that. And then throughout our experiences, it's validated. So when we suddenly find ourselves building our business and we have maybe not had that support or environment that you had, how does one build their confidence so it actually doesn't stand in the way of you growing your business? Yeah, so I think the first thing is just self-awareness, which most of us, understand that, you know, I'm sure your clients as well as Sigrun, somebody will come to you and say, I know what I got to do, but you know, I just didn't do that yet. The first thing I say is stop there, ask why. Okay. I just did this with my client yesterday. We have like a whole marketing plan, right. For her to grow the business. Yeah. She's like, I know, I know, I know. I just haven't gotten it to it yet. I'm like, stop here. No more business strategy. Tell me why you haven't done this in the last two weeks. Well, I'm like, tell me why you haven't done this in the last two weeks, because there's a resistance there and you have to question the resistance. So if you're a business owner and you're trying to elevate your business and grow to six figures or seven figures, and it's not happening, I want you to ask yourself, are you taking the action and where are you not taking the action? So another example is like uh, two weeks ago, I was doing a speaking event for all coaches. So is the ICF Coaching Federation, which I'm sure, you know, many yeah. people are familiar with. And there was about 30 coaches on the call in California and they all want to grow their business. And I said, OK, well, how many of you guys are doing video right now? Not one person raised their hand. So I said, so you're trying to grow a business in a COVID pandemic environment and not one person has done video or anything where they could see your face. How are you growing your business? Yeah. They're not doing Facebook marketing. So it's like, how, how is the business growing? Why aren't you using video? 
Uh, well, video, you know, technology. I'm like, eh. <laughs> what's the real reason why you're not using video? So you have to build that self-awareness behind why you're not taking action. Mm -hmm. And then you need to get to the core of what, what's the belief around you not taking action. Mm -hmm. Because every time we don't take action, this is what we call the behavior. Okay. So everything we do is a behavior. Even if we don't act, that's a behavior. The act mm -hmm. of not acting is a behavior. Everything that we do comes down to a thought and a feeling and our thoughts and our feelings drive our behaviors. So if we're not getting on video, if we're not picking up the, the, the phone to follow up with our clients to land the deal, if we're not closing on a strategy call because we're too passive in our ask or, you know, our discovery call, then we need to trace back. Well, why? What's the feeling and the thought associated to it that's getting in the way of you taking that movement forward? Yeah. So self-awareness. So I know maybe why I'm not writing my book. <laughs> I, I admit. <laughs> so, okay, I'll figure it out. Uh, maybe I'm worried about how much work it is. I'm worried I'm not finishing it. Yeah. Worried about that. I don't know what to write. Okay. So let's say I have the self-awareness. What's the next step? The next step is self-compassion because a lot of times as individuals, we're, we're afraid of failing. We're afraid to make mistakes. We have perfectionist mindset, specifically with women too. Women really struggle with perfectionist mindset and we struggle with failing. And the reality is, is that you are going to fail. That's part of building a business. That's part of being successful. Like the first year of my business, I was in the red. I was putting a ton of money into it and like not gaining any traction. And I just kept, I just stayed in the game, right? And so the first thing is self-compassion. It's recognizing and remembering that you are a human being and it's putting you back on the level of humanity. And every time we don't have self-compassion for ourselves, we're consciously saying that we're some kind of automated robot, robot that's supposed to be 100% perfect. And that's just not realistic. And I always say that when you have clients or when you have kids or when you have friends and they make a mistake, your advice to them is usually, hey, it's okay. You're human, you make mistakes, you get back up, try again, don't give up but we typically don't have that same mindset with ourselves, right? And so then what happens is that we don't take action because of the fear of failure or that we're gonna fall short or we're not gonna be good enough. So then we just don't do it. So what we need to do is the opposite. We need to jump in and if we make a mistake or if we fall short, great, you're a human, let's figure it out and let's keep going and let's try it again. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring up the, the, the point of a book. Yeah. Okay. So I launched my book last year. Okay. It became a number one best-selling book on Amazon, right? I self-published it all by myself. I had the same thought as you. I was like, is this going to be good? <laughs> is, is it going to be a good book? I don't know. Okay. I'm writing it. I'm biased. I think it's great, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, you know, but the, the point is, is that that thought didn't stop me. Mm. Okay, so this is where self management comes in, where every single human being, I don't want the audience, I don't want anyone that's listening to think that I'm saying the opposite about thoughts. Every human being has negative thoughts. Yeah. Tony Robbins, Oprah, I don't care who you are, you all have negative thoughts. The difference is how we manage them. So I had self doubt about the book, I had some negative thoughts around the book, but I didn't let it cripple me. And that's the difference. So I published the book anyways, and I pushed it out there and there were some edit mistakes. Even now, when I read my book, I was like, oh, there's a grammar mistake here, but I still pushed it out and people loved it because people, people don't want perfection because it's not real, you know? Mm -hmm. So even if there was a grammar mistake, people don't care because they're not reading it for the English grammar. They're reading it for the message and for the content and to be empowered and to be engaged. So it's really pushing past those thoughts. And I always say that it's okay to let fear get in the car, but don't let that sucker take the wheel because the second it takes the wheel, it's going to drive you into the wall or it's going to make a U-turn and it's going to go in a different direction that you really don't want to go in. So I always say, let fear get in the car, but keep it next to you or put it behind you. And you still take control of what you know is right and the action that you should be taking. Mm. So you say self-aware, self-compassion, self-management. Self -management. Mm -hmm. And the confidence comes where, at which part? Like it grows with your actions? 
Yes, it, it's with all of that because the second that you build self awareness, you can start to you can start to recognize why you're not taking action, mm-hmm. right? And then once you know why you're not taking action, then you can start to build the self compassion and the self management around it. And then we do what we call reverse engineering. So this goes back to why you're not taking action is writing down. So I always say so everyone can do this right now that's listening. Is that on your piece of paper just draw a line. On one side, put any thought or doubt that's getting in the way of you taking action. So that's getting in your way, whatever that is. So, yeah. you know, I'm I'm afraid to do video, or I'm not good on video, or I have a hard time making my you know discovery call. Ask whatever the thought or the belief is that's getting in the way. Write it down, and then on the other side, put I remember when. So I want you to try to remember when you felt that feeling. Where does it come from, and then how do we break it and shift it so that you can rebuild the confidence? Because everybody can rebuild confidence, but really, what you need to do is all of the beliefs and thoughts that you have in your mind. Most of them don't belong to you; they belong to other people that they projected it onto you. But what happens is that as human beings, we accept it, and then ten years later in our career, in our business. We're behaving according to those beliefs that aren't even ours, and most of the time they're unconscious. Mm-hmm. And so that's why you need to build that self awareness first to realize how come I'm not doing my videos, how come I didn't send a follow up email to those potential clients. Mm-hmm. You know, I had ten people that opted into my lead generator. How come I'm not doing anything with them? Like, mm-hmm. what what's the thought or the feeling that's associated to that? You have to reverse it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's deep work. It's not easy, like fluffy, you know, again, this, you know, society, like just build confidence, wake up and be motivated. That's not real. Like you, you really have to figure out why is there resistance and then you have to break it down. And what I like to call like shatter that belief so that you can make the conscious decision to say, no, I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. But it feels like confidence uh, also ha- is in different areas. You know, I can be very confident in one area and then it comes to another part of my life and then I have low confidence. For instance, I'm not, well, I say to myself, I'm not good, I'm not a good cook. So therefore I'm not wanting to invite people for dinner and da, da, da. Well, I do that anyway, but I just buy something pre-made. <laughs> but that's, that's down to confidence, right? Too. So you can build it in different areas as well. So yes or no. So I wrote my whole book on this. (laughs) So there's actually what we call micro confidence, which no one's ever talked about this before. So I I pioneered it in the book is that that's what you call micro confidence. So this is I'm confident in a skill. I'm confident in cooking. I'm confident in singing. I'm confident in speaking on stage. I'm good at coding. Right. So And that's the problem with our world right now Mm. is that we have been taught to build confidence in a skill and a competency. Okay. But that's not sustainable because what happens, and we just saw this with COVID is that things that are skills that are external, meaning they're outside of you, they're always going to change. So what happened with COVID is people lost their job. They lost their money. They lost their home. Some people lost their business. So they lost the micro confidence, like all those things that they felt good about that were outside of them. And then because they didn't build macro confidence, which we're going to talk about in a second, their whole self-identity and their self-worth came crashing down. So I'll be honest with you in the last like year, our business quadrupled because we had so many people come to us and say, I'm worthless. I don't know who I am. I don't know, like I used to run a million dollar business. Now I'm just, I'm nothing. And I'm like, really, is that a true statement? But because they built their whole life on micro confidence, like cooking and speaking and building a business, the macro confidence, which is the inner belief that you can learn, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we want. The macro confidence of that. I feel great in myself. I believe in myself and I believe in my ability. So the reality is Sigrun, and I'm just going to use you as an example. You can learn how to cook, (laughs) but you've chosen not to learn how to cook, right? So whether or not that's a confidence thing, or maybe it's just a priority thing where you don't care enough about it to, to take the time, but it's not a matter of whether or not you're a good cook. 
You just have to learn the skill. And then that's your macro confidence. I can say, well, I can learn the skill of cooking, but do I care about it enough? Eh, no, so I'm not going to do it. Perfect. That's the difference. <laughs> Makes absolute sense. I love it. I love it. Now, now everyone has to know more about your book. So what do you cover in the book specifically? Yeah, so that's a great question. I talk about my journey a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and how, and I really talk a lot about confidence and also closing the gap between you and your potential, because that's mm -hmm. really what it is at the end of the day is that so many of us as individuals, we're only using about a third of our potential. So mm -hmm. if our potential is at a hundred percent, most individuals are doing like 35%. So mm -hmm. imagine if you can really step into this life at a thousand percent every single day, put your best foot forward and not let all this junk and other people's thoughts about you get in the way and you just push your best foot forward, you'd be in a totally different place mentally, spiritually, like when you make an impact with people. So that's really what the book is about. So I really break down confidence and I also break down success and well-being mm. because we live in this world where so many of us are chasing success, but it's what we see is success on social media, right? And then we work to get there and then it doesn't make us feel good because we haven't actually built the confidence in us as a human being. And then we go try to find another thing of success. And then we go, and then before you know it, our whole life has passed us by and we actually never really found fulfillment. Mm. So, and I talk a lot about this a lot with my business owners is I say, what's the point of this for you? Well, I want to do this and I want to have a lifestyle. And I'm like, what is that going to do for you? Tell me what it means to be successful in your life. And the reality is, is that most people don't even know what that means. If I said, what's success for you? They would say, having an amazing family, you know, being loved, spending time with loved ones, you know, making an impact in my community. I'm like, okay, so then why are you spending 95% of your time working in your career that's not bringing you joy? They don't make, it, it's not in alignment. And so many of us are doing that. So that's really what the book is about. And I break down a ton of strategies, share stories. I mean, the whole, it's like a workbook. It's a combination of a biography of myself as well as a workbook and then research to back it all up. Perfect. We'll link it up in the show notes for Thanks. people who want to get the book. So what is if that confidence get crushed? Like, you know, you talked about the, the macro and the micro and suddenly someone realizes, oh, I've been only focusing on the micro now I have to make this huge shift and start to really just believe I can do anything or be anything. Mm -hmm. So what, sorry, what was the question? So if I suddenly make, if I suddenly realize that I've only been focusing on building My confidence friend. in certain areas and I suddenly yes. want to make the shift, mm -hmm. are there certain steps that I can take to, yeah. to get there? Yeah. So the first one is building that self-awareness and making that list of all the things that you want to do or that you should be doing that you're not doing. That's the first step specifically mm -hmm. as a business owner and then reverse engineering. Okay, you got to so, start with reverse engineering. So yeah. writing down all your like beliefs, like I can't cook or any limiting beliefs or doubts that you have. And then on the other side, tracing them back to where they come from so that you can understand why that belief or thought exists. That's, I mean, and that, that's deep work that takes people, you know, sometimes months to figure out, and then you have to actually work through it. It's not an easy, it's not an easy, like just write gratitude in your journal. No. That's not enough for somebody to shift the behavior. So the first thing that I would say right now to everybody is take, write down all the things that you need to have done or that you're wanting to do that you haven't done yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then next to it, write down the belief or the thought as to why it's not happening, okay? And then reverse engineer where that thought's coming from. That's the first step every individual needs to take. Mm. Love it. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for You're sharing welcome. that with us. We have the book in the show notes, guys. Uh, what are other ways for people to find you and follow you online? Thank you so much. So you can follow my company is at rise up for you. And we're on every single social media channel. We're on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can follow us and connect with us there. You can also go to riseupforyou.com. 
And then you can follow me, Natalina. So I, I, I kind of play in both Rise Up For You and Natalina. And again, I'm on every platform. And Sigrun, if it's okay, I'd love to give your audience a free gift. So we have this huge confident kit confidence kit. It's about 17 pages. It's completely free, but like some of the exercises that I was just explaining to everybody, it's a full workbook that you can just download and write in it and, and kind of work through things. So if you're okay, I'd love to put it um, in the chat, but it's riseupforyou.com forward slash confidence kit. Super simple. Yeah. We'll put that in the show notes. Thank you Great. so much for coming on the Thank show. You. Absolutely. Thank you, Sigrun.